Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the T-52. It's the Tier 6 Soviet Premium Light Tank. It's located on the north spawn of Malanovka and this one is under the command of Picklefish 44. Game started but his gun's dropped and he's off. Good. Okay, well this tank is armed with the ZIS-4 T which is the 57mm gun which is basically similar in many ways to the six pounder gun you'll find on British tanks. It is in a light tank which means he can do things like this which is go up to the centre line with the bushes, sit in the bushes and spot the enemy tanks but they may decide to cross the gap. In fact that Skoda is headed this way. He's locked on. He's going to get spotted any second. Oh the Skoda dipped and he went into the dip and he didn't get seen. But I think he's decided he has to retreat because if that Skoda pops up at all, he's going to be spotted. Okay, well this little light tank was actually designed after the Soviets had experience of the Panzer III, the Panzer III. And uh, the reason they actually built it was because they needed to replace the T-26, which is a bit outdated. And that tank was based on one of the British designs, the Vickers tank. They studied the German design of having a commander who was actually just directing things and not actually doing the, the commanding, the, the, gun, uh, the gun aiming and the loading. And instead they came up with this little tank and the prototype was designed in November 1940. It was at the Kirov plant in Leningrad. But as you may know, after the invasion of uh, the Soviet Union in Operation Barbarossa in 1941, Leningrad was put under siege by the Germans. This little tank was actually designed and, and built at the Kirov plant and uh, the same guys who actually designed it and built it actually took it out to fight it when the uh, siege was underway. It's quite a tall little tank, you can see that it stands up quite a high profile but it's a decent tank in terms of speed because it's got 65 kilometers an hour it's a bit top heavy, so if you turn corners too quickly, you might be able to flip the thing over. But the speed is a major advantage to this vehicle, because it can get into trouble and get out of it fairly quickly as well. 23 kilometers an hour reverse speed. Now as a light tank, it's got 370 meters view range, which means you can do a lot to spot the enemy, see where they are, and get out of trouble quick. But that 57mm gun has got a very fast fire rate, so if the enemy does get too close, you can start pumping rounds into them. Standard reload time is 2.88 seconds. You can see here that Big Fish has got 2.48, so he's managed to shave off about half a second. Now he's stopped for the moment because there is an enemy T-52. I think he's writing something. He's maybe typing something. You can see there's an enemy T-52. Just north far cap, um, just south far cap area. I think he was distracted by something outside the game because he didn't write anything. Something probably happened. Somebody asked him a question, or he had to stop the game for a brief moment. That's so inconvenient when you get somebody who knocks at the door, and uh, they have to be answered. And you're right in the middle of a game. Moving to support you. Okay, the T-150's asked for help. And I think it's because he wants to see where the enemy is. And at this present moment, if he's on top of the hill and he tries to go down the hill, he might get pummeled by that M44. And there might be the Hellcat and the Budgie and the others trying to stop him from coming down. So what he's going to do is, he has been spotted, is to try and sneak in. Oh, it was the Hellcat, actually. And he's just run into the VK as well. You can see he almost flipped over on all of that uh, debris. So he's had to postpone his quick trip over to the other side of the map for the moment after taking that big 90mm round right up his rear. 244 hit points, which is a high roll, I think. Trying to attack T-52. Narrowly misses him. If you're stationary, it's fairly accurate. If you're on the move, it's not so much. 
Oh, he did hit him, and he, I think he hit him in the tracks. And that definitely hit the T-52. And he's now gone behind that rock for safety. He pops out for a brief moment. That's it. Oh, we were seen. He's pulled back. Good. So our teammates are having to go down that hill on their own. And they are being targeted by the enemy M44. At the moment, we're trying to prevent that T-52 from starting capping. And we just lost the VK-3001 to that T-52. So he is trying to shoot at our own teammates. I think he's lost sight of us. Well, certainly he's lost sight of Picklefish for the moment. Unfortunately, he's also got a, a number of uh, teammates back behind him. He's got a budgie. And there's a Thunderbolt, there's an MT-25 and a Cromwell. And the Cromwell's going straight for our teammates over there. Good idea to actually hit the Cromwell because obviously he's the most, the fastest, most agile. Oh, there's the T-52, puts another round into him. Can he get the, a follow-up and, uh, no. Now trying to get the MT-25. You can see it does have a degree of dispersion which makes it very difficult to fire sometimes. It's difficult to hit the target. It's not difficult to fire, but he's getting nice hitch on the, hits on that MP, and he gets the kill. Good. Okay, it's the Thunderbolt that's actually capping. He has used started using the premium ammo, punched the holes through the side. The side's much easier. And try and aim for the engine bay. Oh, now, did he get a fire there? He's now being fired at by the T-52 and the Cromwell. So he's going to have to go behind this mound in order to stop them. And there's only four left on his team. And unfortunately, there's uh, nine left on the enemy team. Okay, somebody's still crapping, but the Thunderbolt is now gone behind the building. I think it's still him who's capping. Okay, he's gone. And he managed to get some capture points out of that one as well. Yes, it was only the Thunderbolt that was actually capping during that moment. Okay, behind us we've got the Hellcat, the one who hit us earlier. Now he knows that we're here and that's the end of his game because he just got wiped out by the KV-2. So we're pulling back because Cromwell's decided to come forward, auto-aim on. That's it. Puts one in. Chase him. Two, you're better than him. Didn't get that one in. No, not again. And he's now trying to go for the engine bay, but the T-52 on the enemy team's turned up. The Cromwell's just managed to kill our KV-2. And now we've got wrecks between us and the enemy. But the T-52 on the enemy team has gone, thanks to the KV-2 first. And there goes the Cromwell. So there's only Picklefish left now, facing four, uh, uh, five opponents. So he's on for a collar off if he can win this one. Okay, enemy ta enemy RT is firing. Oh, that was behind us. There's the budgie. That's probably what the M44 was using to uh, spot for the team. Gets one in. Can he get the kill? It's uh, two shots to kill. That's one. Loses sight of him. There he is again. Okay, go for it. Yes, nice. Let that one settle before he shot. I don't know if you've ever seen the 57mm rounds. They're, they're not particularly big, but you almost have to shovel them into the breach on the, this tank because you're firing so quickly. Of course, the, the gun fires, when it recoils, it automatically kicks the shell case out and you're ready for another one. So it's just for the loader, just to keep pulling shells out of the ready rack, into the breach, keep feeding the monster. That KV-2, it could be a danger. Here comes the A43. Now, these things are very difficult to kill, but thanks to the fact we got the 57mm, which has actually got... 85 Alpha, 118 Penetration, unfortunately the A43 did get him. Ah, uh, yeah. 
Here's the end of battle stats for the first game and that was an ace tanker game for Picklefish44 in the T52. He managed to get a fighter match for getting at least 4 kills. He got 4, a fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points for his own vehicle, a bruiser medal for getting at least 5 critical hits. He managed to get 10 and he got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game and because he got enough resets he got a defender medal as well but sadly he did die. And it was a loss, but his win rate was 15,120, which is very respectable. Uh, super Unicum and quite a bit more. Let's have a look at team score. 2,253 hit points. The next high scorer was the Budgie, 2,323 to him. And the third highest damage after that was Cromwell B with 1,420. When it came to kills, he had the highest number of those with four. Three kills went to the Budgie, the Cromwell, and 252 on the enemy team. And, well... Four for Picklefish, yes. 920 base XP for Picklefish, but I'm afraid he was beaten on this occasion by the Cromwell beat and the T52 on the enemy team. Cromwell managed to get 1,135. 976 went to the T52. And then he's the third highest base XP after that because he beat the Budgie um, on that occasion. Let's have a look at detail. 52 shots fired, 33 direct hits, 27 penetrations, Damage of 2,253 hit points, of which 1,448 were at more than 300 meters. He received six hits, all were penetrations. The armor is fairly thin, 37 millimeters all round on the hull armor, 52 millimeters all round on the turret. So, yeah, just about anything's going to go through. Six enemy vehicles spotted, eight enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, and 1,638 hit points off spotting assist. He also earned 82 defense points in that game. Yes, so he more than earned his the defender medal. 37,827 credits for the game. 3,888 for courageous resistance. That's for getting an epic or battle hero medal in a losing or drawn game. 41,715 credits altogether. And after repair and ammunition respawn, yes, he did fire a hell of a lot of premium ammo in that game. Um, yeah, quite a few. 69,547 credits loss, unfortunately. 1,380 XP. 759 for Courageous Resistance, 642 for this being a premium vehicle, took away 2,781 experience points altogether. So in the first game, uh, yeah, he came across somebody who was slightly more difficult to kill than the others. Uh, he did well to kill the budgie. Uh, and of course, because he managed to get some accurate shots on the guy, A43, it's a different matter. And I think under the circumstances, if you saw an A43, run, run as fast as you can. <laughs> try and try and attack somebody you can take out fairly easily. But the A43 is one of those tanks that you really want to attack at a distance and hopefully as a sniper so he doesn't know where you're firing from. Because uh, if you try to hit him in a confrontation, more than likely he's going to come out okay and you're not. So uh, yeah, that's my advice. If you ever see an A43 or an A44, run quick. So uh, first game's a loss. Let's have a look at the second replay. The second replay is on the assault team on Ghost Town Assault. And well, it's about to start. Okay, his gun's dropped again, so he, he must be a bit slow to load in. He'll get started. I better talk about the gun. I didn't mention that in the previous battle. Or came close to mentioning it. It's capable of doing 85 alpha with 118 penetration on the standard shells, and with the APCR, it goes up to 165 millimeters. So it's got decent penetration on both guns, basically. He also has got a couple of HP rounds just in case he needs them. They'll do 95 alpha, but they've only got 29 millimeters. In fact, at this sort of level, with the uh, AP, the HE only penetrating that much, you're much better off firing standard AP at the enemy instead and not bothering to carry any HE at all. But some people still like to carry a couple of HE rounds just if they want to get a reset. Of course, this is an assault game, so he doesn't need to reset anyone. He just needs to cap out. Okay, he's managed to find an enemy tank. It's a Cromwell. No, he's not popped up yet, but his six cents will have gone off, so he will know that there's somebody up here looking at him. And he's just hiding in the dip at the moment. He'll probably take a reasonable guess as to where 
pickle fish is located. But you notice he's actually positioned himself off to one side slightly so that uh, if they did fire at the centre of the bush, he wouldn't hit. Okay, he's decided to change position. In fact, oh, now that's a problem. A Varask. Capable of doing 720 hit points of damage. Oh, he hit the armour but didn't pen. It says his armour not hit, but maybe he actually hit the uh, tracks. But that Varask knows he's here. That's a tier 8. This is a tier 8 game. He's tier 6. He's going to have difficulty with that. And the RT is now paying attention. The enemy team's got a GW Panther and an FB304. The fact that he got stunned means that that must be the GW. Of course, the FB304 doesn't cause stun, but it's very accurate. Okay, T20 puts his first round in. And he's dead. Okay, don't get too close to the edge. You might fall off. He can poke around the other side because there are a couple of bushes here. But if the enemy is watching, they might still spot him. And the Barask is headed this way. So, yeah, discretion is a bit of part of valor. He needs to get out of here quick before the Barask turns up. If he's still around when he arrives, he's going to lose 720 hit points. Or potentially he could lose 720. The Barask didn't come right up onto the top. I think that's because he was expecting... Picklefish to have teammates waiting for him. Now, waiting to spot him. No. Nope. No, he doesn't want to come up. He's sitting on the edge there. I think he's trying to lure people into the trap, almost like a spider in the web. Most of our assault is actually going on in the north at the moment. There he is. Oh, it's an E25. I don't know what's worse, actually. The Varask or the E25. They're equally bad. E25's got the fire rate. The Varask has got the, uh, the alpha. Oh, the Varask is on fire. And he's spotted for that, so he's picking up the spotting assist. E25 is coming over that hill. And that's enemy RT firing and missing. Now he's got the Brask. Oh, tries a very sneaky shot. He might be able to kill him with one shot. Oh! He didn't get the kill. The Hellcat on our team got the kill. But he did spot for it. <laughs> So he's got a decent amount of spotting assist already. He's locked onto the E25. Only needs two shots to kill him. And he gets it. E25, very poor there. He just didn't respond. Okay, now quick departure. De quick departure, just in case the enemy RT decides to lob around in this direction. But he didn't, so he must be busy elsewhere. We've still got that Cromwell to deal with. And here he is. Yep, he's come up the hill. Okay, we've got the help of Anudes now. And I think Picklefish... Is he going to go round? This will be a smart move if he does, because he'll catch the, the Cromwell from behind. And... The Cromwell won't like that in the slightest because he'll be caught in a crossfire. Does he turn his, his turret one way or the other? Either way, he's going to take damage. He locks on. Doesn't get his first shot in, but he does his second. And the Cromwell goes down to the Uders. So that really worked. Now, it's a long range shot, but he could take out the FB304. He doesn't need to because he's gone. We're two tanks up on the enemy now, and there's still 4 minutes 20 seconds left on the clock. He's still going to do a quick run over here, see if there's any tank destroyers sitting behind this rock. There's still four enemy tank destroyers alive in this game. There's bound to be one up here. Oh, no, there isn't. The enemies really failed there. They should have had a tank destroyer behind that rock. And they didn't, which means that they're covering the other side of the map. And it'll allow him to sneak up on them. Okay, one shot in the Super Hellcat. No, didn't get it. That's better. Lost the auto lock. 
That's why it's so easy sometimes if you do it manually. Even if you lose the auto lock, you've still got them. He knew where the shell was. He puts one into the GW, kills him with a second shot, thanks to some help from a teammate. Okay, so there's only five enemies remaining. They're all over this side of the map. And he's found the Nashorn. Okay, just pump the shells into the gun shield because it's paper thin. Oh, Scorpion found him. And it's the uh, it's the German Scorpion. He managed to get a low roll there. An armor piercing round went in for 435. Remember, it's 490 alpha for the Scorpion. It's the plain clothes Scorpion, the one without the uh, special paint job. And he was spotted, so he's going to have to get out of here quick before he takes another round. Oh, he just managed to block a round from an IKV-65-2, and that's a 90mm round. So he's got a patrol duty now, potentially. He's working hard on this game. Look at that, you can see the round actually whizzed and bounced off his rear. Left a huge mark on his rear. Okay, now he's got to find these enemy. Uh, we've got somebody in the cap at the moment, or near the cap area. There's the... Uh, which one is that one? Is that a... It's a VK-302M. It looks to me like the enemy are in that dip area. From that position, they can get shots on the cap area. So that's why nobody's going into the cap, because they know that they can get reset fairly easily. Okay, the Scorpion went up on the heights, and he's now being attacked by our M12, which isn't really going to help but us, but the M12 is spotting for us. And that one hit the gun shield, or it looks like it hit the gun. So we did get some damage. There's KV-1S, he's a one-shot. Okay, so it's only the KV-1S in the dip. So he only needs to get one round in. He's loaded the APCR to ensure that he does get that shot. Coming over the top. Hello. Oh, he is looking this way. He did hit us. And he gets the kill. Okay, the Scorpion has gone all the way over the top of the hill. So he's way off in the distance. He's the last one alive. And that's the last Hooter, the one-minute Hooter. They've got to kill the enemy. And the, sh the M12 shotguns the Scorpion to get the win. Well done, M12. In fact, I think I've seen that name before. 66 Mad Dog 66. Well, that second battle was even more exciting than the last one. He managed to get another ace tanker in that game in the T-52 Picklefish 44. He also got a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage. A fire for effect for doing more damage than hit points with his own vehicle. And he got a patrol duty for spotting at least six enemy tanks whilst they were damaged. And being the only one doing that as well as a confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks then subsequently taken out by other teammates. He's winning from this one. 4,548, nowhere near as high as the last game, but uh, you can see in the last game he was actually trying to uh, do everything, and unfortunately he just ran out of teammates and also out of hit points. In this game, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. He only got 1,053 hit points. The high scorer in this game was the Scorpion on the enemy team with 3,731. He picked up the high caliber. Second highest damage was the T-69. He got 3,002, and he picked up a Confederate. And the third highest damage was the KV-4 Kreslowski, who got a cool-headed steel wall and 2,366 hit points. When it came to the kill, though, he shared the top spot because the KV-4 and Picklefish both managed to get three kills apiece. Two kills went to the T-69, the Uders, and the Hellcat on his team. And the Scorpion, the KV-1S, and the VK-302M all got two kills on the enemy team. When it came to base XP, it's Picklefish because he got the spotting as well. 1,227 base experience points to him. 885 went to the KV-4. 860 went to the T-69. Fired 25 rounds in this game, 17 direct hits, 13 penetrations. 
damage of 1,053 hit points, of which 355 were at more than 300 meters. Three hits received, two penetrations, one non-penetrations. That was the round from the IKV, which bounced off his rear. And of course, one of those penetration shots actually came from the Scorpion. It was quite an expensive one, but certainly not a high roll. So at least he, he came out of that a little bit better. Um, one uh, hit by received by way of splash damage as well. That was the GW Panther who managed to land around near him. 240 hit points of damage blocked by armor. That's the 90 millimeter. Six enemy vehicles spotted. Nine enemy vehicles damaged. Three killed and 3,714 hit points of spotting assist. And that's what gave him the ace tanker as well as the highest base XP. 40,131 credits for the game, 10,033 from personal reserves, a total of 50,164 altogether. And after repair and ammunition respawn, and yes, he did fire a fair amount of premium ammo, he ended up with a loss of 17,655 credits. 1,840 XP, 552 for this being a premium vehicle, a 1,840 from personal reserves, took away 4,233 experience points altogether. So this time round, it was teamwork and it did work for the win. So uh, yeah, that was much better, much better than the previous one. At least his teammates stayed alive and made it possible for him to generate spotting assists on the battle. If you enjoyed those replays, please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.